Each week, nearly a dozen movies are released theatrically. 40 films a month, more than 400 a year. That's a plethora of cinema. Too much cinema. You'd have to be an addict to see all that. But don't fret. We've got you covered. This is Cinematics. Hey everyone, we're back. It's Cinematics. I am very happy for the first time in about, I don't know, maybe five, six years. Because this is episode 200 of of Cinematics. The king, the queen, the north star of Cinematics has joined us this episode. Anderson Cowan, thank you very much for joining us. How uh, dare pond. you bring uh, gender into this. And, oh yeah, very good. Anderson Cowan, you're leading off the show. I did a little faux opening. What do you want yeah. to say? 200 episodes. I'm selfish. I'm I'm a selfish guy. I uh, position myself where I can just use this show now to my own advantages. And uh, quite frankly, I, I take uh, the picks that you guys really uh, point to, and I just bring them over to the film vault for it to use for my own purposes. So thanks for doing all the heavy uh, legwork. I also saw the 200 was coming up because I do listen to the show religiously, guys. You guys are awesome. I love, love this show. And I saw the 200 was coming up and I selfish, selfish, selfishly said, hey, can I be a part of the big 200? So I'll be back for 250 <laughs> and then 300. Thank but you. Uh, that's I, I really I'm proud of uh, you. I'm, I'm very happy Thank that you. Uh, uh, you got Eric and Bruce to, to continue to take the show to new levels and it's just i love hearing you guys talk about movies i really really do and, um, uh, and anderson i have an idea though for when i say you guys two. i mean i mean i'm talking about bruce and eric <laughs> no speaking of, oh very good uh, before they before eric and bruce before you chime in i just wanted to say by episode 250 anderson you'll be here but do you have two other hosts that you can put in that I can moderate oh, with I see what you're doing. other than Bruce and Eric because they have prior commitment? You know uh, how right, lucky uh, I don't uh, even uh, hello Bruce Bruce and Eric Bruce. were just kind of they were <laughs> they were pretty active on the message boards and the, and you guys were doing a lot of right. typing back and forth right Yeah I tried you, to delete their their uh, responses and and it d- doesn't work they they I don't know what they're doing Speaking of not working I think a lot of people do do that cuz they're like Sid Vicious right like they were listeners of the show before they became part of the show that's what Sid Vicious was with the Sex Pistols like he was a big fan of the Sex Pistols and then true, they needed a new uh punk guitar player uh, but you're so lucky that you got a couple of guys that are Sid Vicious caliber I mean so often if you were to take a chance just cuz they were nice back and forth they come on and they'd just be awful on air but you guys, I mean, you got you got Bruce the Butcher over there who he, his language of film is just fantastic. And yes. Eric is so unpretentious and smart with with movies, which is really rare. Great uh, interviewer, he, too. Really? Yeah. And a great interview. I, I need to listen to more of the interviews. I've listened to a few uh, a few of your interviews, but I've listened to all of the cinematics that you guys have done since my uh, my departure. And uh, you guys, it's just a, it's just a really good show. It's what I envisioned when I first uh, sat down and Greg and we you and I uh, created this this machine and it's better than it ever was when I was on it. And I'm not just saying that it really is three voices are better than two. And these guys are great. So thanks for edu- continuing to educate me on the smaller movies that no one else is really talking about. I, I really appreciate that guys. I, you know what? I'm going to throw it to Eric and Bruce. Uh, what have you learned from people like me and Anderson throughout <laughs> your whole cinematics journey? That's not so Anderson is oh, Bruce supposed yeah. to laugh at this. He's a, oh, so what is the I'm just a, I'm just a happy go lucky guy. That's all. <laughs> so no problem. And anything. Well, how about you, Eric? Bruce was just laughing, scornfully laughing. Disdain. Do you have you learned anything from Mir Anderson during your film journey in, on cinematics before we I, get to the show? I Say don't. Something. I don't know. It, huh? it, it's weird because like the the stuff that you learn, like I think stuff you learn isn't like big moments like they have in movies where it's like, oh. And this is where I wrote the lyrics to uh, Cowboys from Hell or whatever. It's like it's like little things that kind of dig in your craw and stick in there. And then, the more that we all and then, and then you learn it. And then after a while, you start thinking about it. It's like, wait, where did I learn that? I don't know. The, the more we listen to other people who know what they're talking about, talking about movies, the more we can feel like we know what we're talking about. And you guys definitely help me with that. At times when I'm talking about films on the film vault, I'm trying not to use like some of the words that I heard to describe certain movies on this actual show. So like, I, I haven't talked about, uh, they clone Tyrone yet, but I'm going to be real careful not to step on, on everything that I heard uh, Bruce say with, with that movie. And there are times, and this is no lie guys, where I cover a movie and then I hear you guys covering the same movie after the fact. And I'm like, I had the exact same take as, as Eric did on that movie. That's funny. Yeah. Or Bruce and never, never you, Greg. Um, <laughs> but except for the four star movies, so it's a pretty much a lineup. I hate the truth. The truth comes out. Anderson, okay, so we haven't talked to you, I guess, within the last month. What have you been up to? How is Loaded for Bear? You've been very busy on that filmmaking end. It's great. I was so happy to hear you guys watched uh, uh, 
Mr. Death too, because that's one of my favorite Errol Morris movies. And uh, there was a lot of lead up. You get kept kicking it down the road. And I'm like, how are they going to appreciate this movie? Because I saw that movie. <laughs> And I had no idea other than it was an Errol Morris movie. And I thought it was just really interesting that it was this guy that he was the, the death expert. And like he put together all these death machines for capital punishment. I didn't know the turn that it was going to take halfway through. Uh, so I really loved it. And I was wondering if it was going to stand up with you guys already knowing the turn that he became a Holocaust denier and helped that whole movement. Uh, and it still held up. It's not like it's just a fascinating, fantastic movie. And I'm like movies like that from the past that are completely forgotten being brought to the front. I just I I love this show. It's it's almost like like my dream type of show. Oh, thank you, Anderson. And, you know, I take full credit, even though Bruce Perky works really hard every single week for the What's in the Box segment. He pulls out so many great films from uh, Understeen Gems, I believe, Bruce Perky. I'm feeling, I'm just filling this in for you, Bruce. I'm just putting words into your mouth. You do such a hard work. You, and then Eric helps with the things. Anderson, did you know that I don't do any work on the What's in the Box? Yes. The most support? Okay. I yeah, just want Yeah. I mean, I just assume. <laughs> just I assume, assume that <laughs> Bruce any comment from you because you are the the ringleader of what's in the box a very uh, like uh, kind of the heart and soul of cinematics right now it's just my my way to force myself to watch those movies you know that you, you we all have that list right of those movies that we either think we should have watched or they feel like homework we talked about homework movies or you just you just never get around to it. You never get around to it. And if I put it in the box, I'm forcing myself to see it. Yeah. Kind of like when they assign people, people assign you to watch a movie or something too. But these are movies I kind yeah. of have want to watch for some reason. Like I hear about them, they sound interesting, or I'm just like, why have I never watched? Why have I never watched? You know, and I just finally yeah. put it in there and it makes me watch it. So that's it. I get that Pretty feeling, that, that feeling of dread when a movie comes up that I know I should have seen by now, but I haven't. And I just, oh, yeah. I feel so out of it. And, and so I feel like an imposter. I hate it. There's so many uh, like like Roadhouse is in my box because I've never seen Roadhouse. Like, why have I never seen Roadhouse? You're still in there. Good, good time. <laughs> Eric, did you know. put in Roadhouse for Bruce? Did you put that in Roadhouse? No, okay. but I, I I can think of like 50 people right offhand that would have definitely put Roadhouse in. But like as far as that that kind of thing goes, like not seeing a movie that a lot of people have seen. Like it seems that over the last couple of years, the the uh, response to that is. What the hell? You haven't seen Roadhouse? What's wrong with you? Uh, yeah. It seems that the the conversation switching to, ooh, you get to watch Roadhouse for this first oh, that's time. Nice. I'm so excited for you. Yeah, that's nice. That's that's and, nice. Anderson, I have a quick question. Um, mm. Do you want to say something about little, what's going on with Loaded yeah, for Bear? Yeah, Loaded for Bear. Um, I have not worked on it for two months now. I went down a Spielberg rabbit hole. I've, I'm experiencing this man in a whole new way that okay. I didn't that's know funny. I could. Uh, so I, I'm going back for my fifth round, uh, about with, with Spielberg. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm going to start dry my own humor, production. Dry humor, Anderson, uh, regarding start Spielberg. my own production. I'm going to kick that back up a notch once I'm done. Um, right now I'm with War Horse again and, uh, I liked it so much the ninth time I'm watching a 10th time tonight. Here we go. Here we go. I hear all the little jabs and you know, there are some people who don't listen carefully who are just hearing Anderson and then Spielberg and taking it to heart. I, I don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate what Peter Beta has done when I asked you to just rightfully turn down the uh, the, the sound effect of the xenomorph <laughs> screaming in my ear, and now it's become La La Land. Uh, but no, yeah, Loaded for Bear is going very, very well. Uh, we're uh, doing the interviews now. In fact, I just got the, speaking of Errol Morris, I just got some equipment so I can make my own Interatron uh, for the uh, uh, interviews moving forward. So we'll have our subjects speaking directly into the lens as it'll be my face in front of the lens interviewing them, um, which is something that I've been looking to do for a, a number of projects where I finally doing it for this one. We're continuing to document the class each week. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. Loaded for Bear is uh, taking a minimum of two, most days, three hours of my time uh, putting together. We're, we're currently casting a short film that's going to be shot in the documentary uh, about the actual narrative feature. There's so many things going on with Loaded for Bear. It's a lot, a lot of fun. And wow. thanks for asking. And that short is going to be a lot of work too, right? Because with, oh, like you said, it's, work, within, yeah. it's within the universe. Yeah. Why? Okay. How necessary? This is just curious, guys. How necessary is the short within the framework? Because that's like tacking on a lot more so, workload. The whole the whole thing, and I'm not gonna. I could spend an hour talking about it, which I do it like 20 minutes a week on Loaded for Bear, the the uh, the podcast. If you like to hear that, it's a continuation of uh, Let's Make This Movie, or uh, I got a movie to make, which lived on here on Cinematics for the longest time before COVID kind of derailed everything. But 
the whole, the, I wrote this script a, n- a number of years ago, Greg read it. And a lot of it has to do with working with the uh, then called mentally challenged uh, population. Now the intellectually developed, mentally delayed population, which I have a lot of experience with. I love that population. I've been, I've worked with them or volunteered with them since I was a teenager. And I wrote this script where there's uh, places for them to be actually cast with real representation, not Rain Man style. And I've been looking forward to doing this for quite some time. And I stumbled in my research where uh, Joe Dorville and I, who was my producer out of Atlanta, uh, we stumbled across this local acting group out here called Born to Act Players, and they are intellectually, developmentally delayed, a lot of Down syndrome, a lot of autism, and uh, various different uh, cognizant um, um, delays. And and uh, they're all fairly high functioning, different levels. But I went to check them out. To I talked to the one that created it, and I went down to watch. It's like thirty minutes down the road for me, and I went to watch one of her classes, and I just I. I fell in love and started volunteering like almost immediately. And then it became less about a movie and more about just exposing Atticus to it. He loves it. He gets acting out of it. He's working with his population. He's having a great time. They're the most wonderful, like welcoming. I just, I'm just happy when I'm in there. And uh, I always wanted to make the narrative feature with some of these actors because they're very talented. But the more I, time I spent there, I'm like, I need to be documenting what this class is all about and the lead up to it. So I'm doing that now. I'm raising money for that. The money uh, is is coming in in chunks. It's great. A lot of people have been very, very um, uh, um, gracious with their with their money. Uh, what, what's the word? I'm looking generous. And uh, what's what's nice is it's it's a tax write off in most every single case. So if you donate to uh, Loaded for Bear Doc to help bring this story to the light, which Mike Carano and I were doing, it's a tax write off for you at the end of the year. And also, a lot of companies will double whatever you are, or they'll match whatever you do. So if you're hearing this and you'd like to be a part of it and get a credit and be a part of it, or even be part of the producers' meetings, which we have each week. Uh, you can do that over at loadedforbeardoc.com. And one of the things that we're going to do is do a short film. And we're kind of, you, we are using the writer's strike and the the SAG after strike to our advantage without taking advantage, if that makes sense. But there's carve outs and you're allowed to do documentary work and you're allowed to do short films, micro budgets and student films. So we're trying to cast a student film with SAG actors and recognizable names and faces to come in and play some of these parts for a couple of the scenes and also get scene work for the guys in the class, the guys and the girls in the class as well, and document all that. And then we would have proof of work of the narrative that we're trying to get off the ground. So, so far we've, we've offered, we've given offers to big names. Um, we've heard back from almost all of them from the actual, you know, representation and the, the actors are hearing about our project. And while so far they've not been able to do it all, but we've got one guy who's, who's looks like we've landed and I can't, I can't say the name yet, but looks like we're going to have a couple named actors who are going to come down and play with us for a day and be a part of this short, which is very meta and uh, a whole lot of fun. And it's going to have a, a bunch of my friends at this class, uh, in there with speaking roles and everything it's gonna be great it's gonna be a whole lot of fun so is uh the the narrative that's movie for vengeance yes yeah it was uh it was originally called ben and then a movie for vengeance it's been in development for a long time it's been in my head i just want to make sure i get it right i'm yeah. real precious with this because i don't want to misstep well so I, I read the script a while ago has the script changed since you've been with this acting troupe of like oh hey you know uh jennifer she's really good I kind of want to put a character that's got more yeah. of a voice in it, that that sort of thing. I'm rewriting for them specifically because I wrote it from characters that I had worked with in the past, a very specific people. I know their first and last name and I can picture them in my head from like back in the nineties when I worked with them. Those are the parts that I originally wrote for the, the, the people, the individuals that I originally wrote for never thinking that they'd be in it. And now that I'm in a position where I can rewrite those parts for the actual actors that I plan on casting. Yeah. I've done a lot of rewriting there. I've also pulled out a lot of the blue, uh, comedy that was in there it was an r-rated comedy and it i now that i'm older and i'm working so closely with this fairly wholesome group i i don't feel comfortable about some of the scenes that i had in there earlier so i've paired it i pulled that out um but i got avery uh a stand-up comedian just a, he's a comic in general really talented guy he's uh currently looking at it and d- doing some punch-up work on it because i'm so close to it so he's getting some more of the comedy back in there because it is a dramatic Sweet. comedy but yeah, sorry, I, I promise not to go on and on about it. And look at here we are. What, no, this is interesting. See, no, Anderson, I, I don't know if you know this on this uh, on this here uh, podcast. We like to talk about indie movies, and that's exactly <laughs> what we've been doing since you've been talking about Loaded for Bear. So I, as long as I don't get picked up by Warner Brothers, I think you guys might cover Loaded for Bear <laughs> once it comes out. 
Yeah, Eric, just remember, you and Bruce like to talk about indies. I, I just want to oh, yeah, Adam. I, okay, uh, very yeah. good point. Just just Mr. remember that. Mr. Oppenheimer over there. I see. <laughs> Again, no right. <laughs> Bro, stop it. Okay. Barbenheimer. Is... Barbenheimer. <laughs> okay. I've, I've, I've learned. Barbenheimer. Okay. Gregenheimer. But Bruce, stop trying to give me some any kind of legitimacy. I, I, I denounce you for that. Loaded for bear dot com. <laughs> back me. satan Down. yes yes but this is very interesting i i am very not anderson is obviously the creator of cinematics and we are very co-creator. invested in him at, what excuse me co-creator what? Okay, okay, yeah, co-create. Okay, but loaded for bear doc.com, like Anderson said, we're gonna put it in the show notes. We put it in the show notes every single week. Oh, be very in- I'm very interested to see how mm-hmm. the short will actually evolve and actually the website itself, because this is going to be a living, breathing thing for Anderson and his crew. So very, very excited. I bet by episode 250, I don't know, maybe the the documentary will they be should made- all the short, the feature, and the and the narrative feature and the documentary feature should all be produced and available by 250, or else I'm doing something very wrong. And one more thing, Anderson, regarding this, they can go exactly to the site to for the funding, right? To see, because I yeah, see that, here that- there's a, a button there to push, but also just to, at the very least, go check it out and see some of the pictures that Mike Carano took of this actual class. I'm in there with Atticus. Uh, a lot of the actors are in there uh, and you can see our, our mission statement. You can see my statement. You can see our, it's a pitch deck. Uh, you can see the budget, how we're trying. This is all for the documentary specific. Uh, but once we actually cast this, we're going to shoot the short in one day. Uh, and once that's cast, I will uh, let you guys know about that too. But anyone who's already given to it will also be credited in the, uh, the short film as well, uh, when it's done. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to be involved and we need the help. We, we definitely need the help because we're trying to do some really cool things here and it takes a lot of time and energy and equipment. So we're pretty small, but we're, we're working hard and we're trying to make things actually go. So. Anderson, I don't know if Bruce and Eric are agree on this. Uh, we're, we're talking. We wanted to actually just review one big film this week. I am in my early fifties, and I am afraid of life. I don't, as you know, Anderson. This is not me joking. I never leave the house. Ever since Zoom has been a great creator, because all I need to do is actually. Anderson, when was the last time I saw you? Maybe a year ago. I don't. I don't go. Yeah, I literally. Been a long time. I feel like I might be the character from Bo is afraid. And I, oh, I thought we were going to do Barbie because you were talking oh, about death. Okay. We can do Barbie. We can do, you, okay. You're Barbie. We can do Barbie and Bo. Barbie. But Bo, no, let's, Bar- let's do, let's do Bo's afraid. Okay. Bo's yes. afraid. See, I haven't seen it because I'm too afraid, but I know Eric and Bruce have seen it. I listened to an old, the film vault, by the way, you're loaded for bear stuff. You mentioned it's on the film vault feed. Um, I listened to your review. You said a couple months ago when it came out, you said you really liked it, but you really needed for it to catch up with you and sit with it. So it's mm-hmm. been a couple of months and mm-hmm. I'm going to let you lead off and Bruce and Eric do your full review of Boys Afraid. Has it grown on you the last couple of months? Yes. They, they've seen it much more recently than I have. But as far as I can tell, and correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, but it's five acts, right? There's five acts in this movie, I believe. It's not the typical Definitely three four. act structure. Definitely four. I'm trying to think if there's a fifth, what the fifth act is exactly, but yeah. And I loved the first couple and then it kind of lost me uh by the end but i think maybe it bears a second viewing because the tone definitely shifts uh but i i really enjoyed it especially that that first i didn't know that he had that this in him the i didn't know Ari Aster was capable of of this kind of comedy but he <laughs> he is and it was great it was fantastic in fact there was a joke that lives on between avery and i on the film vault of uh the the gra- graffiti because he lives in a dystopian present i guess and there's graffiti all over the walls in the lobby of his apartment building much like a clock or gorge is uh, graffiti right but it's been updated because there's a lot of crude graffiti on the uh on the uh the, the existing artwork in uh the lobby in a clock or orange which i always appreciate but this one there's a particular i don't know if either one of you caught it but there's a particular like graffiti in bo's lobby that it's just a guy and his thumbs up and he's performing uh fellatio on himself and the little thought bubble <laughs> over his head just says don't mind if i do <laughs> <laughs> and that is continuing to live on in uh, the stupid humor on uh, between Avery and i it's little things like that bruce at three hours does it live on with you because it seems i i don't even know how you feel about boys afraid i'm i eric has dropped some hints but is this a sublime experience do you like it as much as anderson and why I do. And I kind of went through a journey with this that it, it was my most anticipated movie of the year. But also as it started coming out, first of all, it was really far away from me. 
and to get to it and to go watch it and to come back home from it, I would have probably spent five or six hours and that just wouldn't fly. <laughs> so, and then my, my, um, expectations got really tempered because I heard so many mixed things, but then I heard Anderson. I was like, well, if Anderson likes it and he says really comedic and I already love Ari Aster's other work, I have a feeling I'm going to at least like it. It's going to at least be interesting, you know? So when it finally came out on, um, physical media the last week or so, I just bought blind bought it thought, well, might as well. Let's get this. Here we go. And I think. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind I think if I this, do. That's right. I, I, you lost one thumb and I started watching. Um, I was <laughs> watching this and I was thinking, I think this is going to benefit from home viewing and from streaming because you can take it in pieces. And literally, I think the best way to watch this movie might be watching each segment and taking a break and watching the next segment and taking a break and watching the next segment and taking a break. It's not a mini series, but there are such. Um, Unique. significant yeah significant parts to this movie that you can do that and the other part of the movie is kind of going at what anderson was saying the details he's always been one of those filmmakers that loves to put tons of weird little easter eggy kind of details but as opposed to just easter eggs that you find and go like oh woo there's a hills have eyes poster in the basement yeah. of, of evil dead and evil dead is like oh there's a you know best this back and forth just like jokes the, his stuff usually adds and deepens the weirdness of the worlds that he's creating. And this one is probably the most of all of those. Um, so I think that's going to make this deepen over time too. But I ended up really loving this movie. And the way that I tested is this, I watched the movie and I was kind of like Anderson, and everyone else was like, well, that was really interesting. That was really weird. I laughed a lot. I also went through a lot and I was also not sure where I came down on it, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. I yeah. kept thinking about it and I kept running things over in my head and trying to make it work and, and not necessarily trying to make it logical because you're, it's highly subjective. Like the whole movie is from a point of view, but uh, kind of like David Lynch in this way, I think if you sit and think about and look at David Lynch, it makes sense. It might make a weird kind of sense in David Lynch's mind, but it also makes a kind of sense. And I, I think, think it's pretty does. simple, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, in a way it is like, uh, but in a way it, it's a lot of other stuff going on. So I ended up kind of loving this movie and I think I'm going to go back to it and I'm going to probably go back to it and watch different segments. And I think I could go back and watch the third segment just because I want to see like, how does that contextualize to me? The third segment, most people think is the the hardest. That's the, the forest, the animated forest yeah. play thing. But you um, know what, Bruce, like, I think in m many movies, that would be the best segment in the entire yeah. movie, but it's one of the weaker ones in this one because some of the others are so strong. It, it is and it isn't. I mean, I think on its own, it stands as kind of a beautiful piece. But yeah. as far as the story goes, it, it's the most, um, I guess, step aside because essentially it's his, and we're not going to get into all the, what the movie's about because it's a lot, but it's kind of his <laughs> his um, alternate life. It's his um, uh, passion, not passion, passion of the, not passion of the Christ. What's the, ah. Uh, I of sleep. No, no, no. What's the Scorsese Christ movie? Um, oh, last, last, temptation. last temptation of yeah. It's last temptation. his last temptation of Christ in this movie. It's basically where Bo is is imagining the life he could have had, and that's essentially what happens in that third part. But Eric, um, Eric uh, yeah, very Eric. quickly, as a Anderson's uh, got to be back in a second. I have on the Amazon reviews, okay, because you bought the DVD, Bruce, right? You bought, you purchased yes, the DVD, I did. okay. So definitely, it's worth the purchase for you, Anderson. Am I bold enough to say this could be a top ten film for you of the year? Bob Bo is afraid. So far, yeah. So, so far. far, okay. So I'm far, so I only have three that I I can't imagine getting bumped, and uh, I'm, this is I, one I of, could tell them. Yeah, then Bla oh, Black okay. Harry and uh, and they they clone Tyrone are the only other two. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Eric, I'm so excited about, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about your opinion, Eric, because here Amazon review, it says, someone says the most fun I've had watching a movie in a long time. I've, I, I'm getting all these really positive reviews. There's a flip side to a lot of people really could not stand Bo is Afraid. Where do you sit on the spectrum for Bo is Afraid? I think it's, uh, I think it's very well made. Um, reminded me a lot of Bardo, but this is definitely funnier. Um, but the thing that I was having trouble getting past is Bo himself. It's like when, when someone uh, asks Bo a question and he just goes <laughs> and starts like <laughs> yes. stammering and being afraid. It's like, dude, just say someone stole. What? Bo, why are you coming? I'm your mom. You need to get on the plane. Oh, I can't. Someone stole my stuff. That's all he has to do. But instead of doing that, he just goes. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, he's talking to his mom where all of the trauma comes from. So yeah, I think he was leaning on a little bit and, thick there. And, and Anderson, is it like, is it, is it like me back in the day in Culver city, how I, I, I used to talk to women in, just in general, was that kind of like used to, <laughs> I imagine it hasn't changed. Well, you stopped talking to them at all. So but, uh, yeah. I, I don't know True. if we're, were we talking about another movie that does like the, the thing that they, Oh, Oh, uh, what was the, um, uh, the family there, only God forgives. No, the the family with the the family that doesn't actually have the kid, and they try to get away, and they have to go back because the oh the, oh 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 yeah 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 the um um uh, it's like see no evil no, or something speak no evil speak there you go hear, speak hear no, no evil or speak no evil yeah, one of no the evil. no just... uh, no evils um but it, it's kind of like that where the characters do really annoying things, but that's kind of the point of it, and then mm-hmm. eventually I just kind of just kind of got over myself and you know enjoyed it. Bo is afraid. I just really hated the character Bo just because, you know, how. But you can hate the, I, you can I, hate you can hate a character, Eric, but yeah, you still love the movie, though, correct? Well, so yeah. I, I I appreciate the movie. It's just the character's front and center. So like the stuff he's doing is like really annoying. He's but Bo. at the same time, that's kind of where the humor comes from. And that's kind of the point sure, of the right? movie. So to say get rid of that is to say, hey, uh, take all the blood out of a nightmare on Elm Street. Well, then you don't have a horror movie, do you? You know, you it's take like, it's like, out of Bo is afraid. You don't have a movie. It's like Kubrick's best film has mm-hmm. Barry Lyndon as an unreliable, you know, as a jerk, right? Anderson, thank you very much for that. But that's I a mean, great example, like, actually. Barry Lyndon himself was kind of vapid and boring and, and unlikable. So it's it's hard to like anything in that movie other than like you know candlelight. Yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> okay, so you you disagree? I mean, you're on a whole different page. You're not loving. No, but Bo's a Bo's afraid's a good movie. Is it um, the actor? Is it Joaquin? Do you think another actor might have made it a more? No, powerful? it's 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 how Bo reacts to the world around him, which yeah. again is the point of the movie. It's just three-hour three slog, maybe three-hour slog There's, for you. No, it's, it's it's not a slog at all. It, it's it's it moves and and, and um, you know, you know it, it's it's kind of like Bardo, but. Bo is afraid seems to have more of a point to it. It's just and I hate how his character doesn't um there's some react like to what re- you're saying. To thing. Yeah, I didn't yeah, I didn't really I think maybe what else you're kind of keen into is I didn't really buy the motivation of the character because when we first see him, he's with his therapist and then he goes home and it's one of those very very well done comedic things where like it's insane but it's so normal to him that he knows all the beats and how to get to where he needs to go where he's literally running for his life makes it just in time and then he's just checking his mail like this is just a tuesday for me right but then not too long after that he's terrified of just stepping foot out front it's like i had some problems with that and that almost felt like some writing issues that could have been shored up because like he obviously got to the therapist without a problem right so but we didn't get to see him get to the third. So when he's put back in the position of just having to do something as simple as go out front, uh, he's terrified, but we already saw him do that successfully and not be terrified. Yeah. Uh, I, I think mostly it's just his inability to respond to pretty Basically. obvious things. Like, like for instance, the, the, the girl drinks the paint and then the mom comes in and freaks out and be like, dude, she, she was pissed off that I was in her room and just started drinking paint. I don't know what's up. Instead of saying that, he goes, <laughs> and then yeah. she's just yelling at him. It, it, it was just really frustrating to see that. But again, that's the point. So it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, I, I I can't fault the movie for doing that because that's what it's commenting on. That That's what it's speaking about. It's well, just really frustrating watching him do that. And to defend it on, on my side, I would say like part of it is also that, he, first of all, so much. Okay, it's it's kind of the the heightened version, but the good way of attacking that whole, like it was all a dream, right? You have that a lot of times, right? It was all a dream or unreliable narrator. Well, this is just super subjective world, right? Like it's all, you're always in doubt on what's really happening and what's not really happening. And it doesn't even matter what's really happening because this is what's really happening in Bo's existence. So I think that that's really important. And I think the other thing that's really important is the final act, I think for me at least, recontextualizes everything because Essentially, hmm, we can't talk about it. Yeah, you can. there, there is a scene. I'm just say there's a scene in the final act where Bo is going, and you're seeing the entire history of his mom's career, like everything she's had her hands in. And I would just advise anybody who has this movie, especially if they have it streaming, or they can stop it, or they can rewind it, or they have it on DVD or whatever, Blu-ray in their brain. Um, watch all those little, that little piece over and over again because 
it shows you how much of a crazy conspiracy, if you believe it, is actually going on in his life. From the place he lives, to the neighborhood he lives, to every single person he encounters in the movie, you will see them in that sequence. Um, and I'll almost like add, Wizard of Oz. Uh, yeah, and I thought about that when I watched this. I was thinking like, oh my god, there's going to be a Lynch, a Lynch Oz Aster <laughs> movie coming out soon. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to add. This is just a little Easter egg. Wait, Bruce, sorry. Did that sequence? That sounds like a very interesting sequence. Did that serve as sort of a linchpin on a narrative sense for you, or just it, there's several linchpins, but it's a huge linchpin because it is. Uh, once again, there's several themes you could say are the the point of this movie. One could be you know living a life of fear and how it is a terrible way to live and how it just basically makes this person into a useless lump, which is kind of what Eric's keying off of. Right. Okay. You don't have to look at me. Look at, uh, but, at the, <laughs> the but I don't think that's what the movie. And once again, it's just my interpretation. I don't think that's what the movie's about. The movie is way bigger. It's a, it's about a society that is designed fully around trying to make you artificially safe and what an artificially safe chemically uh, built Sterile. society creates a certain type, type of person. And this is just the most amplified version of that. And then society, once they create that kind of person, they will not only hate the type of person they created, but they'll literally go out to try and destroy the person they created. And I think that's what this movie kind of is getting on. But I want to put one little detail. This is as Easter eggs go. And I bet in the theater, this was not noticed because you wouldn't have no reason to notice it. If you, I assume, assume you'll watch this again sometime, Anderson, anyone else watching this movie, you know how at the beginning of every movie, there's all the production company logos that, that pop up. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the production company logos that pops up at the beginning of Bo versus Afraid, do you know what it is? No. It's MW. It's Mona Wasserman. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mona, Wasser, I looked, I looked Mona Wasserman is one of the production companies of Bo. Did you Afraid. go back? Did you go back and see that again after <laughs> yes. you watch the movie? And yes. you're like, oh. Yeah, because who would ever, you know, yes. right? You'd have to be to get that on the first. And that interview. is so amazing. And it really, I mean, it's it's kind of obviously kind of a big joke, right? Yeah, but, of course. This this movie is filled with intention. Like you say, yeah. Ari is filled with intention. Everything he puts on the screen, it's on, it's there for a reason. Right. But, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. the it's the most Freudian movie every movie made, but Freudian to the sense that his mom controls every aspect of his life, even to the point that she controlled the movie that's made about his life by someone else. I think yeah. it's pretty awesome. So and, a lot of things in there like that. I, I, can you put Bruce on the film vault? I'm, I'm getting sick of his really in-depth analysis. <laughs> there, Eric, do you agree with me on this? Can we just, we, we're here for the clicks, Bruce. What's going on? Anderson, can you help yeah. on this? Can't have no? two baldies on the film vault. They can't be on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. also like, uh, Bruce, did you see Bardo at all? I did not, no. So the, I think fish. Bo's Afraid and Bardo have like a lot in common. Um, but uh, I'd say only God forgives, even more so. But go ahead. Mm. Uh, maybe he's like a, he's like a brave version There's of Bo. Some mom versions in there. They're mom bomby issues for sure. <laughs> but like Bo's Afraid definitely seems like it's saying something. Bardo seems like it's just kind of has like a bunch of stuff going it's on. It's an excuse for camera. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The, it's the Bardo's <laughs> like, oh, that's a cool camera move. Oh, that's a yeah. cool one. I should watch there. Bardo. Like Bo, really Bo's like afraid. Like you'd love the, Bardo. Even the even the character Bo that was uh, frustrating to me. But also, like you mentioned, all that's all that frustration I get from it is part and parcel to what the movie's about, as opposed to like someone in a movie doing something stupid and it's like, dude, you're gonna die, and then they die. And then that was frustrating and now they're dead. But the movie doesn't really comment on it. It's just a thing they put in the movie. Like Bo's got a lot more going on under the hood. Um, I don't have time for theory. I, I get annoyed by theory quite often, usually because I'm I make exposes my own stupidity and I, I can't access it. Also, it's just like a lot of the time I'm like, if you have something to say, just say it. Like let's not wrap it up. We're not living in the the Hayes code, right? You know, why do we gotta do self-censorship? But this one is almost like made for film school theory because it's a lot of fun. And yeah. I, I think it'd be really fun to un unravel it as a group, as we're kind of doing here, but we're being guarded because we don't want to give anything away. But just to give somebody who's still not sold an idea of where like, the germ of the idea of the script might have come from. It's like somebody sitting down watching, let's just say Fox News or something or just the local evening news. And 
they're like, what if everything that we just saw reported on our local LA news is actually happening? And someone really believes that all of this is happening at the same time out right outside their door, which there are a lot of people, especially older people who that's what their existence is like. Greg, he doesn't leave the house. He watches the news and he's like, why would I go out there? It's horrifying. That's what's going on inside Bo's brain, at least through the first uh, acts or two, first couple acts, well, his first act for sure. I didn't even think of that, but it was kind of like Sirzavasi biopic, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Eric. I'm going to cut that out. Thought. I'm cutting that out right now. I'm just yes, going to give yes, some yes, advice to you, Greg. Uh, Greg, yes, if you no, ever no, no, no advice. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. This, just beat the this. balls, Greg. Beat the no. balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's in the book. Yes, Bruce. God. Uh, uh, first of all, God, wasn't Bo's dad a dick? Anyway, um, listen. <laughs> um, if your front door lock ever, yes, ever I'm, gets, I'm getting that fixed. Broken. Yes, if it ever gets yes. broken, yes, you got to go out and get the paper. Just prop it open. While you go out and get the paper, nothing yeah. could possibly go wrong. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, that's there probably won't be in the a movie. shoe in yeah, the, your shoe, computer monitor yeah, when you can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that if, as his dad. I, was, I saw that as his own. So that's interesting. Bruce, I want to talk to you more about this movie. Oh, I didn't see it this. as his dad oh, being so a dick. I saw it as his own. No. Also, yeah. uh, Greg, no, no. If, Listen, if, wait, wait, if, wait, wait, if wait, you're wait, taking wait. a bath and someone's hovering above you, just move immediately. Don't just sit there and stare at them for five Ooh, minutes. I have a theory a woman, about that, might... too. <laughs> I have a theory about that. <laughs> you have anyway. a lot of theory. Oh, yes. yes Bruce, One last thing. And then we'll... Anderson, yes. Anderson, I'll just say that his dad, or whoever that was, does say something. If you didn't notice, if you go back and watch it again, watch it, you'll laugh heartily. That his Whoever that is says, Oh my boy! Oh my boy! It says all this stuff like I love you so much, stuff like that. It is so amazing. I might have missed that in the uh, the theater <laughs> experience. Okay, speaking of amazing, let's go to ratings. Let's I go saw with... this with my sister, and it's not a good movie to watch oh, with your no. sister. Oh, your mom scene. is fantastic to watch with your mom. Anderson, you're rating on Bo's Afraid now out on DVD, digital on I demand. What I you... don't do ratings, Greg. I, oh, okay. Five stars. I heard that. Anderson. I heard that. Oh, you don't do ratings anymore? Don't you do, do, I come do back. Ratings? I've been going back and forth on ratings for years. It just seems weird to distill like somebody's life work down to like four stars. You know what I, mean? what I do? But I guess. Four, stars, four stars for Anderson? Four stars for Anderson? No, Especially okay, with right. like your re-examining of a, your redefining with the three-star bangers and stuff. Like this is like a, a five-star, 6.9-star banger for people who like this type of movie. I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah. okay. But it's, it's like it's like at least four movies in one, too. So it's really hard. And one of the problems that it has where people are, are saying that it's just not fun enough, it starts off so fun and then gradually gets less and less fun as you go and then gets just bonkers by the end. But I want to say it's nearly as fun as that first act i, I would have liked like the movie it was just that first act it, it would have been a five-star movie okay well at least it's one of your favorites of this year eric what is your rating on bo's afraid um, Your rating yours your selfish rating on it this one's weird um because when i first when i was first watching it it's like fuck this mo- or family yeah. show sorry no you can <laughs> this movie we're, still, we're explicit you can say that that's all right I, thank you i hated the movie I, I was probably at one star and then like got to the end of it and was like oh, it's probably two and a half and then sitting on it for it's been like a week or two now it grows and it's yeah and it's right now it's like three star but who knows okay. maybe maybe i go watch it again and i hate it again or maybe i'll watch it again and you know pick up more i, I think this is a movie that like the longer it sits with you I can't imagine someone giving an accurate review of this, like right out of the theater. Okay. Like, I watch Bo's Afraid and this is my star rating and that's what, that's not going to stick. It's going to move one way or another. <laughs> okay. Well, currently, Eric's but, rating. Yeah. Currently it's three star, but who knows what it's going to be next week or who knows what it's going to be next time I watch it. Finally, Bruce, your rating on Bo's Afraid. It's five star easily for me. Five stars. Mm-hmm. What's, what's my rating, Bruce? You, 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 Four you, stars. What's my, this is the this only is... definitive rating we have is the guy who hasn't <laughs> seen it. <laughs> Greg, Greg, this is actually one of those movies I really can't predict because sometimes Greg gets really pissed off by super yeah. artsy movies like this, and it just he just gets I hated it, and I'm I'm one starring it. But sometimes he loves it, so uh, I don't know. If you, if you could put money on it, what would you what would you say? Um, Four dollars. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, what would what would your rating be if you if there was money on the table? Okay, I, I'm gonna we'll say see. you're probably gonna give this. I'm gonna say you're gonna give it three and a half stars, but I think you're gonna like some of it quite a bit. But I don't think you're gonna like all of it. Okay, cool. This is our two hundred. Yes, it's, it's it. T- I, I feel like Ari takes this. He takes himself less serious, less seriously with this movie than Amber has before, which I think yeah. says something. Yeah. Okay. I watched. I have you watched. I watched a little uh, Q and A of him, and one of the first things he said was, "I made this movie. Thanks for watching it. It's really dumb. It's really stupid." <laughs> That's like the first well, thing he, he said. You tell you, he was just having fun. Yeah, uh, which but I don't he, know if I've seen him do before. But it's so, such artistry there. Like undeniably, he's doing stuff. Absolutely. Guy so do you suppose? Do you suppose if Ari Aster is listening to this, 
He's listening to us like deconstruct the movie, and this is what he really means. Is this is what it's saying? And Ari Aster's listening to this, going, "What a bunch of idiots! It was just a stupid movie about nothing." Well, that's what I, I forget who what fil- what famous critic said or somebody said, but they're like, as a filmmaker, you should never put theory in, into the movie because critics will do that for you, right? Yeah, right, exactly. And uh, before we go, Bruce. Uh, Boys Afraid DVD worth getting? Any kind of special features on it? Extras? Nothing? There isn't too much on there yet. I assume a special edition is going to come out, and I'll be curious to see when that happens. It is worth getting because I think you're getting good amount of video, you know, good amount of film to watch for your money. And I think there's four films here to watch, honestly. And Man. one thing it does do, it has a little featurette, and it shows how much of the stuff he did is practical. And I don't think that's something that people think about. Like, he continues to do a lot of practical weird effects in all of his movies when he does not have to do that uh there's this let's just say there's a um a post love making scene that involves a practical effect and there's an attic scene that involves a practical effect that is a practical effect his dad or whoever that is i, I should also that, point yeah. out with the uh with the strikes going on the writer's <laughs> strike and the actor's strike um with the residuals on streaming uh studios are going to come up with every excuse to take movies off of streaming so i, I mean we've been you know, well, people, sure. been, people have been the reason, beating yeah. the drum of physical media, but that uh, uh, streaming's who knows what's going to happen in the future. But the only way you can guarantee that you'll be able to watch a movie again is by having the movie. Okay, we're out of here very quickly. Anderson, Wait, we, we guys did one movie. What's yeah, happening? That was a bit of big. It's a middle aged movie. Bo's afraid. I was, this I was going to hang. This is Hang with Anderson show. Like, this oh. is hang with Anderson. <laughs> we, anything else we did the 200th I, episode and we just talked about Bo's Bo's afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what's we can talk about the clone Tyrone. Bo's if uh, we can, I was thinking. Well, big we haven't seen Tyrone. Tyrone yet. It sounds like you said Big Bone Tyrone, which is the sequel. <laughs> that, they said that, big bone that's Tyrone. a special movie that I definitely have on physical media. <laughs> <laughs> we all know. We, we all know about They Clone Tyrone. But before you go, Anderson, do you have any final recommendations, movie recommendations? You saw Barbie. I'm sure you you talked about it this week on TFV. But is it a movie for for people to watch? Yeah, I'm still su- surprised that so many people are surprised that they like this, and it's more than just a what you'd expect a Barbie Mattel Barbie movie to, to be if you just heard about it like in a, in a vacuum, like it, it, Noah Baumbach, uh, no, Noah Baumbach and uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on her name. Greta Gerwig, or, uh, Greta Gerwig wrote and directed this thing. I mean, she did little women and uh lady bird. I mean, there's, there's real filmmakers behind this thing. It's not just a, a quick cash grab to get like young girls in the theater. Young girls should probably not be in this theater. The last the last word you hear in Barbie is gynecologist. That's the, that's the last word you, I guess young girls should know what a gynecologist is, but I mean, that's the whole point. There's a lot, a lot to love with this movie. I, so I would have liked a little more Mike judge humor in it. I think they were approaching Mike judge, but they didn't quite get there with it. Uh, but there's a lot of great stuff. And Ryan Gosling steals the show, which probably is not the right thing to say with a Barbie movie, but he is fantastic. It's like uh, Andy Serkis and Black. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. But he but is a what, big part of this movie. I, I haven't seen Barbie, but what I'm hearing about it is that they, because Greta Gerwig doing Barbie is not the first indie filmmaker that got to do a big budget movie. But every time they get some interesting indie director to do a big budget movie, they end up doing the big budget movie. And it's the same as everyone. You don't even see them in there. Yeah. What I'm hearing is Greta Gerwig actually got her indie sensibilities in oh, a yeah. big budget. Absolutely. Barbie movie, which I, I think that's got to be a first, right? Like, I'm, I'm trying to think of. Well, I, I maybe, equated also maybe with Lego movie. And Dune, but I, I can't think of I can't think of anyone else that actually got to put their fingerprints on the on the. Well, you Lock see, like a James, making... James Gunn does a bit, I think. Uh, yeah, James Gunn. I mean, sensibility is kind of already matched that anyway. Yeah, that's but true. to dumb it down, like I'm also saying that this is kind of like the the, the little girl version or the female version of Lego Movie, uh, because it's a brand movie. It's, a, it's another one of these brand movies, but it's not what you would expect, like we were just talking about. And Lego Movie was not what you expected. You didn't expect them to take so many chances and be so for it to be so well done with the comedy and for there to be that much that they swung for the fences they connected i feel like they mostly connected with barbie and one of the most impressive fun things about barbie is you know how character actors play like versions of themselves and they're like like neil patrick harris is a good example where he plays like a, a version of himself and uh, harold and kumar mattel is doing that in this movie and they're a brand and they're playing a version of themselves as a brand that is not very flattering which i found to be very, very gutsy and uncorporate like so i appreciated that a whole lot 
um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's, there's a lot, all, way more going on with Barbie than there is with uh, Oppenheimer. I can tell you so that. So it's it's oh. almost as if you're saying that if you take chances and do something interesting, people are going there for the IP anyway. But then other people might be drawn to it because they're doing something interesting. It's the opposite of See, Batman. I thought what you had to do was put oh, Michael God. Keaton in a Batman outfit again, and then that would bring people. But Apparently, Made a lot of people happy. Apparently, I don't know. I will never know. Not not, not a lot of people. <laughs> if well, anyways, I, to be, I would just be. I, I, I just I just love the the idea that that they can actually because I always say in Anders and I've heard you talk about this before when when they uh so and so stolen from us because oh great they're in the Marvel machine We're yeah never, mm-hmm. you know that they're wasted now but no, we got I, Robert Downey Jr. back in Oppenheimer finally. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. But I mean, the, the maybe maybe Barbie's kind of uh, a, a sea change in a way of, uh, hey, now uh, we can get uh, Jim Cummings doing a Marvel movie, but Jim Cummings will make it a Jim Cummings Marvel movie if that's something he wanted to do. You know, maybe yeah. it. Uh, I think know. Barbie is an outlier, though, because she is such I mean, the movie is all about what she represents and with you know the, the political climate and with gender and with I, I think it all kind of lined up and that's probably why Greta I would have I don't know the story behind it but I would imagine Greta Gerwig came to them with the idea plus from my understanding I didn't realize this but Barbie uh is as a as a product has been kind of waning uh for the last few decades and, and yeah. little girls do not gravitate to, to Barbie like they did so there it was kind of like we have not a whole lot to lose there but it, it it may be an outlier but it's also an outlier that made almost 400 million dollars worldwide in its first weekend so and you know, Hollywood's pretty slow. So hopefully that's the lesson they, they learn. No, the Whether lesson they'll get <laughs> is Ken needs his own movie now. Um, yeah. who's available and G.I. Joe is probably gonna get rebooted Anderson, now. Anderson, I'm trying to be optimistic and but yeah. you're being Wait so for correct. the Funko Pop movie. Oh boy. <laughs> <Just remember, laughs> the beanie 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 baby movie's coming out next week, yep, I think. It is. Yep. Jesus, guys. Eric, just one one more thing before we go. IP is greater than original content. Just remember that's number one. Okay. Okay. And number two, God. clicks is, on, is better than original content. It clicks is better than nuance, Bruce. Remember that. Clicks and IP. Gold. Okay. Clicks Are you glad that Anderson's not on the show anymore and I'm, you're being led by this guy? You guys okay with that? Huh? Bruce? No comment? Uh, what, what I was right down to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So glad. But also, how many how many Greta Gerwigs are out there that would want to direct a movie like Barbie? How many How many are there? Like, how many, I, the, I don't the, know. But like, if you can take like a, a strange, like, you know, a, a, a IP and then, hey, you know what? There's an interesting take here. And then yeah. if the, I mean, you know, the, the, the people that own them, the corporations that own them, you know, they only care about dollar signs. It, uh, you know, apparently with the Barbie movie, they don't care if they're being sent up or, you know, yeah. crapped on. I it's just like, think, oh, does it make money? Yeah, crap on us all day. We don't care. Bruce, I think it's what, what Anderson, I, I think, is right is right on. I think it's just that perfect timing of a waning, you know, a waning uh, product and a rising, you know, film voice that she's got just enough cachet and they have just a le- le- enough missing cachet that yeah. the two just hit in the middle. I think you're absolutely right on that. Because you imagine, like, say, pick some other up-and-coming filmmaker that gets a great idea and goes to, I don't know, what's the product that they're going to try to have some uh, connection to that they're going to try to... We're going to make the Cheerios Ari, movie here. Ari Aster <laughs> doing, Ari Aster doing oh, a God. Pokemon movie. Oh, oh my God. God. be interesting. All right, guys, we're he done. No, I want to see, see John Waters do Gushers. Shane Carruth doing a Pokemon <laughs> movie. All right, for Patreon 52, we are going to, me, Eric, and Bruce, we're covering the movies Notting Hill. That's Bruce's choice. And then also The Sixth Sense. I don't know. I think everyone has seen these movies. But if you want to check out our Patreon, Anderson still gets a cut. He's a co-creator of the show. So, yeah. so if you're supporting us, you're supporting Anderson. Actually, you're just supporting me because this guys, is true. I never. Yes, this is true. I never give them this any money, tr- by the way. I steal all the money. True- yes true statement my my phone pinged a couple days ago and it was like oh uh it's from it's from paypal and i opened it up and greg has sent me a dollar <laughs> he sent me one dollar this is true <laughs> highway robbery from greg's Rizavasi, folks That's yeah, Patreon, it was a, a dollar a full dollar there was, there was a couple dollars that came in before that but one night he must have messed up with the math and then he's like oh i better send over that dollar great next time you can just use that for stamps or something I or maybe if, they, if, if it costs them more to have a dollar transferred maybe we can like bankrupt them that bankrupt way them yeah, that was an idea i had back in the day when i got really mad at some of these companies and i i wanted to get a bunch of people just calling their 800 number all day to tie up their <laughs> their people and have them because you're so powerless with these big companies but little things like that maybe there is a way to like bleed them 
at least it'll be a minor annoyance at the very least. Oh. And Anderson, thank you so much for joining. I'm I'm trying to get you out. I we all have an out. Anderson, I want to boot you out right now before okay. you go. Final. What else is coming out this for- week, guys? Ooh, I, I got I got something for you. I got a bunch of things. <laughs> oh, oh no! Don't talk so, about movies. I don't like movies. What? Well, yes. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, yeah. I did a uh, got a couple interviews coming up. Uh, Timothy Woodward Jr., director of Till Death Do Us Part, in theaters okay. August fourth. Carter Smith, uh, director of The Passenger, also coming out on digital on demand August 4th. The Passenger. We will Starring talk who? about that next. Uh, Kyle Starring? Gallner. Okay. Pas- Anderson. From? I- in from America. Well, what movie was he in? Kyle Gallner. What the, movie? The The Passenger. You know, what's the movie that Anderson likes? One Dinner in America. Oh, movie oh, yeah. oh Dinner yeah. In, Dinner in America. Well, what well I just saw him in an old, oh, Jennifer's Body. Yeah, Jennifer's yeah. Body. <laughs> Kyle Gallner's really um, cool. We what got a. Uh, I, I did a. Uh, I did a really long interview with uh, the director and uh, actor of Alien Planet. That's out yeah. now on digital and Blu-ray. Oh, we talked for like an hour and a half. It was awesome. Uh, okay. the, and, you know, the, and Anderson, you will hate Alien Planet. This is not your movie at Dang. all, Bruce. You would probably dig it. I, I think you'd dig the uh, the Guar kind of aesthetic to it. Oh, um, I would like that. How dare you, Eric? Okay, well then, definitely check out. You're back in. You're back in. I loved PG. I love Psycho Gorman. Yeah. Uh, we, got a, a, we got a we got a director for Underbridge, uh, Mrs. Vera's Daybook that comes out August first. So probably by the time you're hearing this, it might be out. Okay. Uh, we got a, a July 27th, which is tomorrow. Yeah. Um, odd hours, no pay, cool hat. Okay. And then uh let's see the 28th we have Sympathy for the Devil which we'll talk about Shrapnel Dreaming Wild with Casey Affleck. Oh yeah. Uh, who, who who's in do the interviews? We got Casey Affleck, we got uh-huh. Walton Goggins, we got uh-huh. Bo Bridges, we got right. Zoe Deschanel. Uh, and you're going to do the Wild. interviews for that. Dreaming Wild's that. like the happy version of Crazy Heart. Dreaming Wild okay. is so good. I, it, okay. it made me cry happy tears. Um okay. don't know if it's going to be for everyone but look it I'm not reviewing that. We'll review that next week. Uh, what comes around? Another Kyle Gallner joint comes out August 4th. I don't want to cover any of these movies. Eric. And Jules. Oh, too many. Yes, With Jules. Jane yeah. Curtin. When was the last time you saw Jane Curtin? But you know you Whoa. love her. And Ben Kingsley coming out August 11th. Kingsley My thinks God. he's a comedic force, doesn't he? He does. But Jules, <laughs> I, I saw the, I saw the, uh, I got the email. So I looked at the uh, trailer for Jules and it looked really cute. And, okay. and, so, and sometimes you need that little, that little, you know, you got the you got the indie, you got the horror, you got the action. Sometimes you need that little button of cute in there. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Eric, yeah, stop doing a little these. pinch of salt. Eric, stop doing these interviews. You're doing too good of a job. Bruce, did you tell Eric not to do it? Just the, the barest minimum is be- the best. Told to go. Him. Oh, these are not only that. interviews, but these are also movies we'll be covering in okay. the next week. And okay, uh, yeah, only only Black Adam on the show. This is new directive. All right, before we go, um, yeah, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, make. I'm gonna Greg, are you Black excited about Blue Beetle? I'm, don't don't yes i'm very excited Greg, but, and, and, I, i'm counter programming for eric and, and bruce I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna really submarine the show but before i do that we have our north star final thoughts from anderson cowan thank you very much for having me guys this was fun i was hoping we'd get to more movies sorry that i dominated with like a 20 minute um dissertation on my own personal project earlier also real estate agent is what i am now i am officially a real estate agent and i've been interviewing with brokerages so the idea is that i'm going to split my time between making movies and selling houses even though i'm I'm not technically selling the houses but you know brokering deals and whatnot and that's so far it's going swimmingly so uh yeah well if people want to contact you do they just contact you just, on your site? Or if you have any, just, if you have, I'm now uh, legally allowed to talk to you about real estate. So if you have any questions or uh, you, you need referrals or you you're in the area at all, just hit me up at Anderson at AndersonCowan.com. Uh, and I, and I'm not just doing this speaking of cash guys, but I'm not just doing this because I need an adult job, which is part of the reason why I began this. But I have always, this is the second time I've had my real estate license. I originally got it in 2006. So I'm back in the game and I, I just love properties and I love I love all of it. I love helping people find what they need for big decisions. It's important work that I'm really, really looking forward to doing. So please, if you, I'm very serious. And if you have any questions, uh, hit me up. I'm more than happy to, to speak with you about that. Anderson you know, at AndersonCowan.com. Left, left yes. turn, but that's what you have to do nowadays. If you want to make films, you have to have another job as well. So. I, I now that Atticus is older, I have the uh, m- much more time to be able to do things like that. 
Thank you so much, Anderson, for joining us. Go back Cinematics. to bed, Atticus. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Bruce, I'm not uh, going to hog it. dad coming out. Final into... things, final things. Bruce, you want to say to Anderson? Oh, yeah. Or... Last thing I was going to say, two things. Uh, the box movie for next week, for anyone who's playing along, we picked it last week, but next week's box movie is Thirst by Chenwick Park, mm-hmm. which I have okay, never seen cool. before. And cool. I don't know if I've ever asked Anderson what movie I should put in the box. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah you have. You guys did it. You turtles can fly. Was oh, that's my right. Movie. You did. You well, did you're on movie. again. So every time you have guests on, you could put another one in the box. Oh man, you don't. Can I? Can I get one to you later? Because no, every time no, I, I put you on the spot, I, I, you know what? I'm gonna. I can substitute for Anderson. There's, there's this thing that that he's always loved. He's been passionate. I'm gonna say this for Anderson. What's that tiles movie that you like? You, you want either the 3D printing? Oh, or the tiles Beta, movie. Uh, uh, Resurrect Dead, Mystery I've of the Toy Tiles. I've watched that. Toy Tiles. Okay, yeah, you've seen that. Uh, have you seen the Dish? This is kind of a go-to for me, but the Dish. I don't think I have the Dish. No. Okay, the Dish, and it's not dish. A, a dish that is best served cold. It's uh, about a satellite dish based on a true story uh, about the lunar landing and uh, a giant dish that they had down. And uh, so you just d- discover it. It's one of the best feel good, beautiful movies. It's right up there with the castle. If you ever watched the castle. Ooh, I, I love another one. I've seen my box in my box <laughs> uh, <laughs> that uh, from when box. you guys talked about it. Yeah. It was when we talked about it, I put it in there. So it's still in there somewhere <laughs> rolling around. So and that's Mark Crimmins. So the, the, the castle and uh, the dish. Yes, absolutely. Eric, Eric Holmes, you have one final thing to say to Anderson. We're going to like 20 second out. Anything? Uh, I, I hey buddy. You. Good to see you. I, I, I love you. you and I want to give you big hugs <laughs> yeah, and kisses. Let's talk, let's talk to you. Whisper sweet nothings in your ear. <laughs> let's talk <laughs> to Anderson. Thank you so much. We'll talking. see you guys next week here on cinematic see you i miss you greg let's get the kids together and just for the record i wasn't actually yelling at atticus to go to bed it's like he's not even home it's three in the afternoon so (laughs) love you guys see you at nine o'clock goodbye